shows that someone is helping Serena to be a spouse? Of course they do. Hello, everyone, and welcome into your Bachelor Headlines recap. Welcome back to Shared News. Before we get into all of the tea, and there is a lot of it from this past week, mm -hmm. be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any Shared News Bachelor updates. As always, I'm your host, Morgan Wright. Today, I am joined by my friends, Blakely McHugh and Kayla Thompson. Hey, guys, how are we? We're good. good. We're happy it's Friday. Happy to be here yes. with you and Kayla. Ready to talk Bachelor. Same. Yeah, me too. Halloween weekend should be fun. Can't wait. Dive in. Yeah, and we are just going to go ahead and do that dive right in. We have a lot to discuss. It feels like on the show, off the show, things kind of blew up on social media this week. I want to start with something happy. Joe and Serena got married in a courthouse this week, something I don't think any of us were expecting. Uh, but the pair posted a video of them getting married in a courthouse on their Instagram page. The caption said, we're still having a wedding this September, but who doesn't want to get married twice? Um, Kayla, were you surprised by this? I mean, I was shocked, but was here for it nonetheless. Absolutely. Yeah, I was here for it nonetheless, but did not see it coming at all. I thought they'd, yeah, just get married, you know, next year and everything, but I'm happy for them. This is like there, if, if any couple were to just kind of like do this courthouse wedding, I'm like, it should be them just because I think most of bachelor nation is like, they're so legit. Like, yes, please get married immediately because you guys are such a solid couple ever since paradise. So I'm super happy for them. They seem like they're really happy as well. I was surprised also. And I did feel like it was a little, it feels a little quick. I mean, I guess they've been together slash engaged for more than a year now. But Morgan, it reminded me of the co of conversation we had, you know, a few weeks back, because obviously you're engaged to um, a man who's not from this country. We know Serena uh -huh. is Canadian. So my thought, and when we were talking about it, you were saying, you know, once you get approved, you have a certain window of time that you actually have to get married mm -hmm. or the approval gets taken away. And so I was thinking maybe that's kind of what went on here since she's Canadian, something for her citizenship or for them to get legally yeah. married. Maybe she did get the approval, so they needed to make it happen, which would make a lot more sense than them just going to the courthouse for fun, which the nothing wrong with that. But I think that that's why it surprised people. But I think that that would make sense mm -hmm. if, that, if that if that was the reasoning why. Yeah, Blakely, it's exactly what you said. You know, I'm getting married to a British citizen. So in order for him to become a U.S. citizen, he has to enter on what's called a visa or fiance visa. Uh, once you get that fiance visa, you have 90 days to get married. So um, it's quite the process. I mean, David and I are in the middle of it right now. It's not fun. I'll tell you that much. Um, and I actually reached out to grocery store Joe because I'm like, oh, if he's <laughs> going through this process, I want to know the inside <laughs> scoop. Like, yeah. how long am I going to be waiting for my fiance visa? And um, right. what he had said was that uh, Serena actually got what's called a B1 visa. Uh, which is a little bit different. Mm. It's not a fiance visa. It's technically uh, a work permit visa where uh, under certain cir circumstances, you can work in the United States. So she got that. And, and I believe mm. that it is the same. You know, once you get the visa, whatever it may be, you have however many days married. So um, I'm probably going to end up at the courthouse too with a later uh, <laughs> real wedding. And, you know, they did Are we going to get a they... video of it, Morgan? Oh, sure. Why we not? I mean, I document yes, everything please. else online. So, <laughs> of course. Um, but right that, well. that actually leads me to my next question. Um, do we think that they will film their wedding and it'll be like a Bachelor franchise exclusive? Blakely, what do you think? You know, mm. I actually think so because... I just feel like they're kind of a beloved relationship in Bachelor franchise. They kind of remind me of Dylan and Hannah G. Like, there's just a few, like, standout solid couples that is beloved by Bachelor Nation, by the fans, is, like, really embraced and given platforms kind of at every turn. So I could mm -hmm. totally yeah. see them getting, or even something like um, Crystal and Chris, you know, how they had their sort of special in Mexico during Mexico. Bachelor Paradise. Yeah. So I could see maybe something like that happening as well. Yeah, I, I will agree with that because I think on top of everything you just said, Blakely, also Joe does work for the franchise. So I think he would be way more open to it than just like anyone else because he does um, the podcast clickbait. So 
I think it's possible. I think you get your wedding for free, probably. Um, you just have to kind of like, you know, be okay with the whole world seeing you. But they're influencers. Mm-hmm. They're used to that. So I could see them, you know, being open to that. And I think it would be, we haven't had, have we had a, I know we had, you know, with Crystal and whoever. But um, have we had a, a, a filmed wedding in a while? I feel I like the last one so. I can remember was like Sean and Catherine. Sean and Catherine, right? I think was the last one. Yeah, it's been it's been a yeah. while. Um, a Ari and time. Lauren got married, but they did not uh, have it filmed. I can't think right. of anybody else no i I think think that would be it and look we have to celebrate our wins too many bachelor couples break up so the fact that we we had one marriage this week i'm like thank you bachelor gods for coming through but not only that we got three bachelor engagements this week it was the week of love in bachelor nation it really was we had dean we had Dean and Kaylin. We had Becca and Thomas again, which we'll get into that. And um, Crystal and her now fiance, Miles, who's not a part of Bachelor Nation, but they do have a child together. Let's start with Dean and Kaylin. Um, not your typical engagement with Dean and Kaylin, which I think we were all expecting. Nothing they do is really typical. But of course, there's been quite the saga leading up until this moment. Uh, you know, Dean mm-hmm. has said in the past, I'm not getting Kaylin a ring until she gets me a truck. And then he said on his podcast this week, you know, by the time this podcast episode comes out, we'll be engaged. We all were like, wait, what are they? We, we didn't know. We didn't know. They finally posted about it. Um, mm-hmm. But Dean also revealed that he lost Kaylin's original 4.5 carat engagement ring in his garage. He put it in the junk drawer and lost it. So now he's got a placement holder ring. <laughs> Should that be a deal breaker? Oh Such my a goodness. Dean thing because like he doesn't yeah. care about the engagement at all or the ring. Such a thing for him to do is put it in the junk drawer and lose it. You know what I think is really interesting about the whole thing is that, um, you know, the argument was made that Kaylin needs to get me a truck so I Kayla get her not. ring because she makes more money than me. Like that was the whole reason behind it, right? And then you go on to put a 4.5 carat ring in a junk drawer and lose it. So that's kind of (laughs) where it doesn't like vibe with me very well that Dean is like, why should I spend all this money on Kaylin when she makes more money than me? If she buys me a truck, Mm -hmm. I'll buy her the ring. And then you lose it. Like what, what is that? Who knows with Dean? I think (laughs) for me, I'm just surprised that they're honestly, Every time I, uh, you know, check back in, I'm like, oh, they're still together. Like, I'm really surprised (laughs) because when I watched them on Paradise, I was like, they have like three months and this is not going to work. So the fact that they've been together for like three plus years is, you know, beyond me. But God bless them. If they, you know, getting engaged, they want to be together. I mean, they've they've made it. Kaylin is used to Dean and his antics, apparently, you know, clearly. So she's probably like. I don't even care. It's fine. Just find it. It's going to be, it's going to be okay. I don't even care. (laughs) The whole, I mean, we've obviously known like this engagement was coming for a while because I think it was back in August that Kaylin posted August, a couple months ago where she had posted the steering wheel. And she was like, if you listen to the podcast, you know what this means, whatever. So we kind of knew this, the engagement Mm -hmm. was on its way, but honestly the whole, like you need to buy me a truck. So I'll give you a a ring kind of felt icky to me. I just feel like there shouldn't be like uh, an ultimatum put on an engagement. Like you buy them a ring and you propose because you want to do that you want to spend the rest of your life together that you want to you know what i mean like there's a there's a a hint of like almost like you're taking the specialness away from it when you're like you have to do this in order for this to happen and i i mean i don't know if this is an unpopular opinion but i have never really loved their relationship only because i feel Mm. like kaylin has kind of turned her life upside down yet dean's hasn't Mm. and that's not to say that Mm. she doesn't like that or you know she's really embraced it and you know she's found new parts of her but from an outsider to me it seems like she has done all this change and completely changed who she is yet there's been no almost no balance on the other side and then again like maybe a ring that would be really important to her is now that would be more of a her thing is now we have to get me a truck in order for me to give you something Mm. that's about you you know what? That's in that's kind of wild because I don't follow them. I'll just go ahead and own up. I don't follow them. So I didn't know that the I thought the truck situation was a joke. So I didn't mm. know that 
she actually did give him this truck. And that may have been why he went ahead and got her the ring. I agree, Blakely. I think that's that's pretty wild. That's a little out of pocket. I feel like, yeah, I don't know. That doesn't sit well with me either, honestly. And I, I agree. I haven't been the biggest fan. Again, maybe why I don't follow them. I haven't been the biggest fan of their relationship. I think individually, they're both just kind of like, okay, I don't really like rock with y'all like that. But again, mm-hmm. God bless. You guys want to be together. You've been together for, you know, a while now. But yeah, I mean, clearly it's, it's working. That's weird. I don't know. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. Know. And I mean, they're unconventional, right? And even the stuff yeah. we're about to discuss with Becca and Thomas, we've just seen a lot of um, different ways of people going about proposals these days. You know, it's not the stereotypical, the man proposes to the woman. And, you know, Kaylin and Dean have been outspoken in their opinions on that about making it special for each other. So I do understand the sentiment. But on the other hand, I also feel like it's a mentality that I don't know I would want to deal with for the rest of my life. If I was Kaylin, you know, like my fiance likes to do things for me with no expectation of me giving him something mm-hmm. in Doing return, something. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether that's yeah. a monetary value or, you know, sentimental or whatever it may be. He likes to do, do things for me out of the kindness and goodness of his heart and the same for yeah. me. So I mean, like we've all said, best of luck to you guys, Dean and Kaylin. It's not my jam. I don't think it's anybody else's jam here on this panel. So we'll keep it cute and we'll keep it moving to Becca and Thomas, who got engaged for a second time. Again, a little bit of an unconventional uh, way to do things. The first time around, Becca proposed to Thomas. This time around, Thomas proposed to Becca. And it, again, was this huge... Um, media headline. My question is, do you think it's necessary? Or do you kind of mm. look at this as, as an attention grabber? What are your thoughts, Kayla? Oh, interesting. You know, yeah, I, I think that people are making an interesting point. Because, you know, when she first proposed to him, yes, it was unconventional. Mm. But I felt like I, I respected why she wanted to do it. Because, you know, I, mm. you know, for her, in the past proposals have just yeah it's just a bad taste in her mouth almost so she's like let me kind of switch it up and take control of the situation in a way just to kind of uh, I guess rectify that for herself um and so with that being said a proposal is a proposal right so why do we have to do it a second time I think you know I guess the only thing was was he going to get her a ring and so I think that's a different thing than having a whole nother proposal again to ask you again, if I already asked you, so why do you need to ask me? I don't know. It does feel (laughs) like it kind of logically doesn't really make sense. So Mm -hmm. I could see how people are saying it's an attention grabber, but I will say from what I've seen of Becca and Thomas, they, yes, they're in bachelor world and she's also on a podcast with bachelor nation, but I don't see them as people who like, you know, are clout chasers like that. I feel like they're just kind of living their life and doing what they want to do. And maybe Thomas just really just, he was going to do that anyway. So he was like, I'm still going to go ahead and propose to you. So that's, that's kind of my, my thought process on, on the whole situation. But Blakely, what about you? I didn't really, I didn't really mind it. Cause I think like Thomas probably wanted to have that special moment of getting down on one knee and asking somebody to marry him. So I think maybe like my perspective is that's probably where he came from in the second proposal. Cause I don't, believe that he's ever proposed to somebody so i think he probably wanted Mm -hmm. to like have that special moment for himself what i don't think is necessary is this to also be like a new headline like they're already engaged and at this point like i understood the headline of you know it was a big deal when becca did it because that's so unconventional but now we're going back to the man proposing to the woman and they've already done it you know i just i didn't think it needed Mm -hmm. to be as blown up as it was Uh, Mm -hmm. but i do think that thomas probably wanted that special moment for himself Yeah, for sure. I mean, anytime you see someone in Bachelor Nation get engaged these days, what it's always a people exclusive, you know, after they get engaged on the show, there's a people exclusive. If they break up at the end of the show, it's a people exclusive. If they get engaged off the show, it's a people exclusive. So to (laughs) me, it just kind of feels like, um, you know, an extra attempt to maybe get some money from People Magazine or the Daily Mail or whoever is is paying you to get these photos of Thomas now proposing to Becca, which just to me feels unnecessary. I mean, I get it. It's part of the game. They're influencers. This is how they make money. But at the same time, I don't like it when it's super transparent that like 
Mm -hmm. we called up people magazine and we're like, we're going to do a second engagement who wants to come take our photos and how big is the check going to be? I don't, I don't love that. Um, but speaking Mm -hmm. of people exclusives, you know, who else had one Maddie Pruitt and her soon to be husband, uh, they're getting married this weekend. So something very interesting about this is what members of bachelor nation will show up to Maddie's Mm -hmm. wedding in the comments section. So Maddie Mm -hmm. posted a photo of her with her wedding dress in her hands up obviously but uh in the comment section some bachelor nation members were responding that they would be there this weekend victoria f um and kelly flanagan which brings up an interesting point seeing as she is back with peter who maddie ended up with at the end of the season my question for you is do we think kelly got a plus one or was peter not invited <laughs> Peter's ass. No way Peter is invited. Yeah, no way. <laughs> Kelly's plus There's one is no somebody way. else in Bachelor Nation. Yeah. <laughs> Do yeah. you think Kelly would feel like, I don't know. I, I'm always of the camp that if I'm going to a wedding, I want my significant other to be there. Obviously, it's way different circumstances. Kelly knows that she's going to Maddie's wedding. But do you think deep down Kelly wants to take Peter? I mean. <laughs> I'm sure she wants to take him. You want to go to a wedding with your significant other. It's so much more fun that way than going by yourself. But I think that that also would just be extremely weird. Yeah. I mean, I think in my opinion, knowing that Maddie is, she's a Christian and, you know, even I've, her and I randomly got to be in the same kind of like Christian influencer event one time and we met each other and she was so chill and more down to earth than you would think. She's seems very drama free, actually funny enough from watching the season. You wouldn't think that, but yeah, I think knowing that about her, I feel like she probably would just be like, listen, he can't be in the mix. Like I just want, this is my man. This is my moment, like drama free. And also you don't want, I'm sure she wouldn't want, and maybe Kelly too, wouldn't want that to take away from her day being about her and her fiance or her um, soon to be husband. So I think with all that being said, Kelly's probably taking a friend and, you know, I'm just going (laughs) to let that be what it is because that'd be too much. Now, Kayla, I know you just talked about Maddie being drama free, but this would not be a Bachelor headlines panel if we didn't talk about the major drama that is going on right now between Victoria Fuller and potentially Greg Grippo. I mean, we've been following the story all week. Um, The two have been spotted in Rome together. There have now been multiple pictures that have come out with the two of them. Obviously, we know Victoria is currently on Bachelor in Paradise. Um, Spoiler alert, I'll give you a second to X out if you need to, because we got to talk about, you know, the real situation at hand. So if you don't Mm want to know the ending, you got to keep it moving because (laughs) spoiler, uh, Victoria allegedly ends up engaged to Johnny. So the fact that she's been spotted in Rome with Greg is causing some major suspicion. You guys, first, before we dive into really the details, what do we make of this spotting? Aren't they supposed to be in hiding? Right. (laughs) (laughs) Like after the show, they always go into incognito mode until the show is done. Where, why are they not in incognito mode or in wigs or hats or something? Because now we know... I, but they've done it. You know, the people who've won The Bachelor have done it before. But like, uh, we now we now have spoiled that Johnny and uh, what's her face, Victoria, likely do get engaged at the end of it. So there's one spoiler. Now we've got another spoiler that oh they don't last. Now we got a third spoiler. Like we already just spoiled so much yeah. of what the show is. Yeah. No, it's so true. It's so true. And I know there's like a I know there's like a rumor that I think maybe. Z- our own Zachary reality tweeted about this, that like maybe the show is wanting Greg and Victoria to be together so that it draws attention to the show. But I feel like personally, that's not it. I think it shows the show is like, doesn't have control or over, you know, it's cast members because I agree with Blakely. I feel like Victoria should be in hiding right now. To me, I think her and Greg are being just, totally obvious about it that they want this to be out because they're out in Italy like and they know they have their phones they know people are talking about them right but it's like they know that the past week people have been talking about them so if they didn't want if they wanted the rumors to stop then they would have kind of done something to shut those off but they didn't they keep going out they keep letting photos be taken of them so yeah I feel like the show is kind of definitely 
they they don't have it a handle on this thing in my opinion they don't um yeah no. it's it's a little sloppy but it's intriguing i'm curious yeah. do y'all think that they're like did they make sense as a match like this is so random to me like i don't know i don't get it i want to know what well, you before we about yeah that. before we get into that i want to talk about the tweet because uh, i have it pulled up oh, here yes, zachary please. tweeted someone told me it's possible the producer sent Victoria Fuller and Greg Grippo to Italy on purpose to make a scandal. So viewers are invested come reunion time. What do you guys think? Mike Fleiss quote tweeted Zach's tweet and said, that's absurd with an exclamation point and put bachelor in paradise. So I feel like this is your typical right. Mike Fleiss stirring the pot moment where it's like, we don't actually know if he's yeah. confirming or denying. He's definitely trying to create more buzz, but it does bring me to that point that the reunion is filming soon do you i mean like within i think a couple of days maybe even a week has mm -hmm. this scandal made you more interested in the season as a whole and more interested in watching this reunion no the answer is yes you guys are you serious <laughs> <laughs> well because you know you're the yes no, but yeah let me explain like, myself you go, you go. Because everything right now, Morgan's like looking at me with like disappointment right now. I feel <laughs> your like eyes just peering into me. Because every I, the what's getting out of hand for me with Bachelor in Paradise is everything is feeling too manufactured and too manipulated. So now that there's this mm. potential idea that oh, Greg and and I don't really believe it if I'm being honest because I feel like Victoria is has been so removed from Bachelor Nation that I don't see her doing anything that that like Bachelor ABC tells her to do. Like I feel like. She she really does whatever the heck she wants to do. But still, like, it just feels like everything is just being so manufactured and manipulated and, like, blown out of proportion. And I just don't really care. Like, you know, mm. we, I feel like we scrutinize so much people. Like, let's look at Tino, for example, and the cheating, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we, like... Uh, he, he was annihilated for he didn't even do something illegal now there's a well did victoria cheat yeah you know and it's like we're so invested in these people's lives that we don't even know and i'm just like i don't care if she cheated if she didn't <laughs> cheat i just don't care any longer like it's not it's a big deal but she didn't commit a crime and it, it, yeah. I, I think i feel like people are just so way too invested and it's kind of so uh, no is my answer morgan <laughs> <laughs> Blakely, i get it i totally get it because for me, what makes me not care is the fact that the me watching Johnny and Victoria get engaged, that whole journey is null and void to me because I know mm -hmm. that they don't end up together. So that part, I'm just like, so I don't even, why am I watching them? Like, y'all might as well change the way that you edit them or something. I don't know how you're going to do that, but don't have me, I don't know. It's like, I don't know if they want to make us too invested because to me, it's just like, why though like because you know in the reunion they're gonna have to yeah so i think when it comes to the reunion i'm interested in that just because i'm gonna i'm curious to see if they're going to weave in the greg of it all if johnny is going to bring it up if johnny how johnny's gonna handle that conversation and then how victoria is gonna like explain herself like how far into this postseason mess are they going to go because for me i'm just like you know what's the timeline of their their breakup her meeting greg because well i know you know our girl allison she also works for like nick Vial, and so she's friends with natalie and his girlfriend natalie and i know that she had a birthday uh in august and i think victoria and her are very close so victoria was there I saw Greg was there with Andrew and I think even Justin. So maybe it was that we need to have Allison here to like maybe clear it up to see if like she caught some vibes <laughs> or something her. like that. We'll be like, <laughs> it's so funny because I was just texting her actually. But yeah, just to kind of assess out this timeline because it's like, that's this is all very close together that, mm -hmm. you know, potentially she met Greg in August. And I, I heard that her and Johnny broke up in September. That's what the spoilers are. And so, and now she's out in Italy with Greg. Like, y'all going on trips together? That's kind of crazy. Yeah, that timeline is definitely interesting. And I think, you know, my thought while you were explaining that was just how short-lived, if that's true, and that's how it all played out, just how short-lived Victoria and Johnny's relationship really was. I mean, you know, being on the beach for six weeks, getting engaged, being engaged for 
two months and then breaking up yeah. and moving on with somebody else. So it seems to be a little messy. Uh, hopefully we find out more details soon, but that's it for our bachelor headlines panel. You can feel free to leave comments on any of the things we discussed today, whether mm -hmm. it's about Victoria and Greg, whether it's about Serena and Joe, Dean and Kaylin. We love to hear from you guys, your thoughts, opinions, and comments as well. Please be sure to come say hi to myself, Blakely, and Kayla on our social media pages. Our handles are on the screen right now. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, ring the bell so you don't miss out on any updates. And we will see you back here next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.